Hello, in this video we are going to see containerization right from basics to some advanced concepts. The intention is first uh, to understand containerization in detail. The second is to get into some interview questions and get the direct answers to those interview questions. With that intentions, let's get started. So why containers? To understand why we have to use containers, we have to see the background and history of computing. So for the computing needs in the past, we used to use dedicated machines like 30 years ago, uh, we used to have dedicated machines. So anything which we want to do, we had a server machine where the whole code was hosted and one server machine was typically meant for one application one big monolith application was hosted in a server machine so the entire machine resources are dedicated for that specific application then from this uh, there was a need which was identified that the same server machine can be used for different applications and which these applications could be on different operating systems so that's where we had a concept of virtual machines so in virtual machine what happens is that we have a host machine and let's say this is a host machine this is like the server machine which we saw in the dedicated machines in that host machine we would be able to have multiple different os and in those multiple different os we shall be able to have multiple applications with their own independent process boundaries which are being set here and uh, so how that is being done like in one host machine in one host os how you are able to have multiple different os's installed is os's operating system os installed is done with the help of hypervisor so if we want to see the definition of hypervisor Hypervisor also called virtual machine monitor is a software or firmware layer that enables the virtualization. So this is important enables the virtualization of physical hardware resources, allowing multiple virtual machines to run concurrently at the same time on a single physical host system. The hypervisor abstracts the underlying hardware resources such as CPU, memory, storage, networking and allocates them to virtual machines providing each VM with its own isolated virtualized environment. So this is very, very important that isolated virtualized environment is a very important term because what is the meaning of isolated? This something which is running here should not cause any issues to the application which is running here. So if this has a problem, uh, it has a crash, it should not cause a crash in the other operating system. Also, it should not be able to access the in-memory data of this specific VM. So they are isolated and they are their own virtualized environment and they are safe because they are not able to access each other's memory space and memory contents. Now the problem with this uh, approach is that we have to still have the entire OS installed. As many virtual machines are there, those many OS you have to have in your host machine. So uh, here this is the issue with the resources again that we are over utilizing the resources thereby there is an issue that your machine would become slow and you won't be having enough uh, computing resources available for your process needs. Then came the containerization approach wherein what happens is that you have something called as a container runtime. So on the host operating system you have a container runtime and then you are able to have multiple containers running and container is a package of application code and all its dependencies and it basically includes everything required to run the application and this is built on two linux kernel features the first one being namespaces which provides you process isolation process isolation is like one process is running it should not be able to read the contents of other process which is uh, running and a crash here should not lead to a crash in the other process the other thing is the resource limits with the help of the, the c groups it is possible in linux to provide the limits to the resources which are there for example how much hard disk space one container should be able to use or how much ram one container should be able to use 
so those kind of resource limits can be provisioned with the help of c groups which made it very very easy for people to have container engines available for containerization so now to recap we had dedicated machines which were like one application one monolith application sitting on one server machine leading to lot of resource wastage if in case the memory is not being used or if in case you have to scale the server it was leading to lot of resource issues resource wastages in the dedicated machines then came the virtual machine but they had their own issue because you had to have the whole os whole os instance sitting along with your application and process boundaries which led to misutilization of the host machine resources and then there was a transition to containers and containers are lightweight and they only require a container runtime still you would be able to have the process boundaries and the resource boundaries set with the help of container runtime again we have another view of a vm so in vm we have a host os and then we have a hypervisor and then we have the guest os as many virtual machines are there in that specific hardware box those many guest os would be required containers are isolated but share os so here what happens is only one host os is there there are not multiple host os which is required and they result in significantly faster deployment much less overhead easier migration and faster restart so now let's see what are the key properties of containers portability containers encapsulate application and their dependencies including library environments library and runtime environments into a single package okay and it is very easy to port it to different environments to different machines share it with your colleagues so portability is one benefit consistency so if a container is spawned in your machine vis-a-vis -vis in your colleagues machine it would be consistent it would have a consistent runtime environment for applications ensuring that they behave predictably regardless of underlying infrastructure this helps reduce the it works on my machine problem so what is the it works on my machine problem so you would say that this application is working properly on my machine and the tester would say that it is not working on the qa environment so that is the it works on my machine problem isolation containers provide lightweight isolated runtime environment for applications allowing multiple containers to run on the same host without interfering with each other this isolation improves security and resource utilization by preventing applications from accessing or affecting each other's resources. Scalability. So what is scalability? Scalability is that your computing needs. Let's say you had this service providing you some APIs. Now the users of this API are increased and you want to provide the same service and you want to scale the service. So what you can do is you can have one more instance created and then if the more scaling need is there then you can create one more instance so this is basically horizontal scaling wherein you are scaling it horizontally there is another scaling by the name vertical scaling so in vertical scaling what happens let's say this was your initial container what you do is you enhance the resources which are there so for example you will increase the memory or computing power is what you want to increase so all those things if you are increasing then it is basically vertically you are increasing and that's where it is called vertical scaling so scalability uh, coming back to the topic containers are highly scalable and can easily replicated and scaled up or down so up or down what is the meaning of our up and down up and down is as the need is there you may have three uh, containers running for the service and let's say the demand of this service has decreased then you can kill this one and this one and retain only one based on your needs and this is called elastic scaling wherein you are able to scale up or down elastically as per your needs and this container provides this container orchestration platforms like kubernetes provide kubernetes we are going to see so i'll just skip this resource efficiency containers are lightweight and use resources more efficiently compared to traditional virtual machines this we already saw that virtual machine concept is very resource extensive because we have to have the multiple host os installed on the machine uh, they share the host operating systems kernel so they are sharing all the containers are sharing the same host os kernel and only include the necessary components 
to run the application reducing overhead and improving resource utilization. Faster deployment. Containers allow applications to be packaged and deployed quickly, often in seconds or minutes compared to traditional deployment methods. DevOps enablement. We have a specific question on this. We are going to see this in detail later. Uh, containers facilitate the adoption of DevOps practice by enabling automation, collaboration, continuous delivery pipelines. Containers can be integrated with CI-CD tools to automate the build, test, deployment process, streamlining the software develop, de delivery and improving efficiency. Microservices architecture. So what are microservices? You have a monolith application. Let's say every functionality is within this application. So this application provides you, uh, let's say the UI. This is providing you the, uh, let's say some kind of business logic, service logic. It provides you the data access layer. So what is happening here is that big monolith is encompassing all the features which are required for your application needs. Now what happens is if you have to deploy it, it takes its own time for deployment. If you have to change something here, you have to still build the whole thing because it is one binary which is there. So you have to still build everything. You have to still test everything. So this is a monolith application. And in microservice, what we do is we segregate different uh, domains different specific business uh, uh, functionalities into multiple services and thereby isolated delivery and development and deployment can be done in microservices architectures and containers are well suited for microservices architecture where applications are decomposed into smaller loosely coupled services each service can be deployed and scaled independently on its own container enhancing greater agility scalability and resilience resource isolation this we have already seen two three times containers provide a level of resource isolation that helps prevent conflicts between applications and ensures that each application has access to its own resources the isolation also enhances security by limiting the impact of potential security vulnerabilities. Now we saw what is containerization and what problem does it help to solve. So different containerization engines are available. And uh, when we say containerization engine, it refers to a software that provides a runtime environment for creating and running containers. It is responsible for creating, managing, orchestrating containers on the host system. Docker is most prevalent containerization engine. So, but the others are Container D, Cryo, CRIO, and Rocket. Uh, no need to get into details of what is the difference between these containerization engines, but these are available is what we should know that Docker is not the only containerization engine. There are other containerization engines which are also available is what we should be knowing. So what is the process of dockerization means? How can you create the Docker images? What are the different steps involved there? So first thing is you should be having a Docker file. We will see what exactly is a Docker file. Then you have to build the Docker image. So you have to execute a process called Docker build and you will get a Docker image. Then when you do it after getting the Docker image, when you do a Docker run, you would be having a Docker container running and you can have multiple Docker containers running from the same Docker image. That is what is represented here that multiple Docker containers are running. Let's see these steps in detail now. So the step one. Uh, so first we should be having a Docker file. A sample Docker file is indicated here. So what it is doing is first thing which it does is it takes the official Python image as a base image for this uh, Docker, which we are going to spawn. It sets the working directory. So slash app is the working directory and it copies the hello.py from our local machine uh, that script the Python script we, which we want to execute into the container that copy process is done with this specific command. And then we are saying that what command should be run when the container starts that is done with the help of this. So we want to run Python hello.py so it's a simplistic uh, docker file now you may know that we are copying this hello.py so we should be having a hello.py so that's what is represented here the hello.py script which is a prerequisite and simply in this hello.py we are only saying hello docker 
that's it now the second part we have to create the docker image from the docker file so you have to go to the directory where that docker file and hello.py script is already there and from your terminal from your command prompt you have to execute docker build command so you are saying docker build minus t so this hyphen t is indicating the tag which you want to give the docker image so the tag which we are giving here is my python app okay and then when you run this you would have a docker image available with you and finally once the image is available to you image is built successfully you can run the docker container from the image by executing this command so what we are saying here is docker run and this is the image which we want to run my python app so what is the difference between docker image versus container so the first process which we saw in the uh, previous question was that we were building a docker image and then we were executing and when we were executing it we were calling it as a container so that's what is the difference docker image is a blueprint or recipe it contains all the instructions needed to create the docker container it contains the application code libraries and dependencies os configuration images are essentially read only so it is read only template they are self-contained and provide consistent environment regardless of underlying host machine docker images can easily be shared so how it is shared this is one of the questions which we are going to see but these images can easily be shared and they make it ideal for collaboration and deployment now let's see what is a docker container a docker container is a running instance of docker image imagine it as a physical application built from the image blueprint so we had a blueprint the docker image and from which we had a running docker container it includes the actual processes libraries and configurations specified in the image containers are isolated from each other and the host machine ensuring they don't interfere with each other's applications you can create multiple containers from single image each with its own state and data so that's where in the container read and write was written because it can have its own state and data this allows you to scale your applications easily and if we have to recap mutability uh, the docker image is read only so immutable and it, this is read and write instance it is a running instance where you can read write process things stores instructions for creating the container docker image has the instructions to create a container runs the application based on the image instructions this is immutable this is modified while running easily shared and stored for example you can have it in azure containers registry aws container registry docker hub so these images can be placed in different registries which we will see in a bit this cannot be shared okay directly it cannot be shared they are created from images and images are what is shared so those are the difference between image and container so we had already seen what is a docker file it's an input to create the docker image so a docker file is a text document that contains instructions for building docker image it provides a way to automate the process of creating docker images making it easier to manage dependencies configuration deployment of containerization containerized applications so we are taking a official python runtime as a base image that's the first line we are setting a working directory in the container we are copying the content of the current directory to the slash app uh, inside the container slash app directory inside the container we are installing pip is a package manager we are installing all the requirements all the dependencies which are listed in requirements.txt so that is being done here we are exposing port 80 uh, so this is done by this specific uh, line and then we are creating an environment variable where name is word and finally we are saying that this specific file the python file should be run when the container launches so that is what is indicated here so the common docker commands some of these we have already seen docker build which creates an image from a docker file docker run which executes a container from the image and now there is a important thing which is given here this is what we have to see hyphen p and 8080 and 80 so this indicates that the host machine the port where this application uh, can be navigated on is 8080 and inside container it is port number 80 so 
this is what is written here maps port 8080 on the host to port 80 in the container that's what hyphen p publishes this port that's what is done here and uh, which image it takes this is the image so this image and the latest version hyphen latest means the hyphen latest is the latest version which we want to use we can specify the version also here so it is running the container in a detached mode this specific command and uh, the port is also mentioned and if you have to pull an image from the registry how you can do using the docker pull if you have to push an image to the registry how you can do that you can do with the docker push if you have to list all the images which are there you can do docker images if you want to list all the currently running docker containers you can do docker ps if you want to start a interactive shell a bash shell inside a container uh, then you can do this so it is a executing because it's a container it is already executing and you can go to the bash shell by using this command okay this is a very important command you go inside and then you can see your files you can see your logs you can see what exactly is happening inside the container by using this command then you can stop a container using the stop command you can remove the container by using rm and you can remove the image rmi remove image by using rmi command so let's say that you have created an image you have built an image now you want to share it with your team what is the recommended way of sharing these images the recommended way of sharing this images is something called as a docker registry by registry you can share it uh, with your colleagues you can share it for deployments to different environments also so a registry is the place where you can place you can push your images and your colleagues your build environments can pull the images from the registry and have them running as a container so that's what is indicated here from the images you can run containers and the images should be pushed for further use on a registry and what are the different registry options which are available so you have a on-premise kind of uh, setup and a public cloud kind of setup where the registry is available on a public cloud so docker trusted registry this is on-prem these are some of the examples of public cloud hosted docker hub is one docker trusted registry azure container registry aws container registry google container registry qa registry other cloud so different options are there so the entire process if we have to see one more time we have a docker file in the source code repository when we build the docker file we can get the image and from the image we can have a running container which is available here uh, so this is little bit of a uh, not correct so it is an image which we push here not a container so this image is being pushed to the docker image registry and from there some other host some other machine can pull and run the container in their host os so that is what is indicated here so the same image can be running here and once it is published to the image registry some other host machines can pull from the registry and then they can run in their host os so the typical process how you share the images is by pushing them into a docker registry from which others can pull and use them the most common docker registry is docker hub but there are the options like ecr amazon ecr elastic container registry google container registry and other self-hosted solutions like harbor so what you do you create your docker hub account you log into the docker hub account you tag your image so tag is basically naming the image tag your image before you can push your image to the docker hub you have to tag it with your docker hub username so with your username you have to tag this image then you can push the image to the docker hub because you have already logged in you can push the image to the docker hub and then the image can be pulled also using the docker pull so that is the typical process of leveraging registries the example here is docker hub but it is the same for any other docker registry now when you have to have multiple docker images running it is better to use a docker orchestration uh, platform like docker compose this is not as comprehensive like a docker swarm or or a kubernetes but it is still better than running each and every container individually so what is docker compose 
Docker Compose is a tool for defining and running multi-container Docker applications. It allows you to use YAML file to configure the services, networks, and volumes of your application, making it easy to manage and orchestrate multiple Docker containers as a single application stack. With Docker Compose, you can define all the services that make up your application, including their configuration, dependencies, and relationships. You can specify the Docker images to use for each service, the ports to expose, the environment variables to set and more. Okay, so basically with this Compose, you are able to compose the entire application containerization needs and then spawn them. Suppose we have a simple web application consisting of two services, a web service running an Nginx container and an API server running a node.js container. We want to use Docker Compose. So how you will write the Docker Compose YAML, that is what is indicated below. So you would have a version of Docker Compose, then you would indicate the services which are there and we had an Nginx based image that is indicated here and the host port to the container port mapping is indicated here. The volumes are indicated here and it depends on another image. So which image it depends on is also listed here which is the second image which is the node.js image and the command is npm start at the start of the container that is what we have to run and volume mapping is being done here and environment we are able to set one environment variable here so when we are running a docker compose so this is the example of docker compose all the containers run into a single node or a single machine single host machine and in kubernetes it can run containers over a number of nodes instead of just running it over one node it can have it executing on number of worker nodes which are there kubernetes we shall see later so not going to detail here so how do you expose the ports in docker so we can do with the publish flag we have already seen it in uh, the previous questions docker run when we are executing the image running the container we can have the port mapping 8080 is the host and this 80 is on the container we can mention expose 80 but do remember expose does is just a declaration it does not uh, publish the port yet so for publishing after expose you have to run this command uh, hyphen p to publish this port you can have the port defined inside the docker compose with this port section so the important two ways uh, let's ignore all this expose and everything the two important ways of uh, exposing the port is one in the docker compose file here and the second one being when you are executing the container at that time you can do that so you are doing a run and the other variation of run is this where you can specify the host IP also. Now how the CI CD is used with the Docker based containerization, let's see that. This example is based on Azure, Microsoft Azure, but it can very well be uh, used in any of the Docker uh, flows with the CI CD. So CI is a process of continuous integration. Whatever you are building, you would be continuously integration integrating that code and making it deployment ready and continuous deployment is once you have the build ready build tested uh, you would be able to deploy it also immediately so that is continuous deployment wherein continuously your code which has been written which has been tested is getting deployed as well so let's see with the example so we have an engineer who writes some code using a visual studio he could as well be using IntelliJ, Eclipse or any other editor and then the code is pushed to the repository and it could be a git here in this case it's a Azure repository which is indicated here then with the help of Azure DevOps pipeline and it could be Jenkins as well so with the help of the DevOps pipeline the image is pushed to the Azure container registry and with the help of Azure DevOps pipeline the image is pushed to the Azure Kubernetes service. So that's where it may be a production, it may be a test environment, it can be your dev environment. You are having the image ready to be available for your testing purpose or your prod purpose. And from where the image is coming, image is coming from the Azure container registry. It could as well be a Docker hub. And finally, you can gain some insights on how the image is running with the help of logging uh, mechanisms which are available in 
AKS or any other place, any other computing resources where you have deployed your image. Okay, and this image is what is being used by the if it is a QA environment by the QA people for their testing. If it is a prod environment, then this is the image which is being used by your prod applications for their various servicing needs.